So I think I need to simplify my burden. Actually, I start with the nearest thing with me, something that's literally in my hand. It was my handphone. No, I didn't throw my phone away. <laughs> what I was trying to do is to reduce the clutter and noise inside my handphone. You know, uh, unnecessary notification, too many apps, too many email subscription. At that time, I have more than one emails and many social media accounts that I don't really use. They are not really physical things that we can touch, but we don't realize that it takes so much of our time and affecting our life so much. So I went to the internet and Google how to simplify my online account. That was when I discovered minimalism and its whole community, website, blog, forum. Minimalism is not something new. In fact, our most uh, earliest religious and spiritual leaders are said to have lived a simple life. Prophet Muhammad, Gautama Buddha, also notable individuals like Mahatma Gandhi and St. Benedict. And at the, the very fast pace of our materialistic now, many of us seek minimalism again. And as for me, it is my answer, the clarity. Once I started to reduce my possession, I feel free. Letting go is not easy at first, but, but the more I do it, the easier it gets, and the more I learn about myself and my priority. That was my journey. From just decluttering online accounts, I start to practically minimize my material things to heavier, unseen, and complicated clutters like toxic relationship, unnecessary commitment and routine. Many friends and family who knows my journey always ask me, Aisha, how do you know how to stop decluttering? When is finally your number is minimal and optimum and ideal? Is it living with 100 items? Is it living on a backpack? Does it mean that you cannot own a car, a house, or kids? Oh boy. Owning less thing is only the reason of minimalism. But minimalism, minimalism itself, the key is knowing and consistently evaluating what are our priorities so we can strip away all the excess. Everyone's priorities are different. So, what is considered necessaries and what considered excess are also different. For example, a minimalist painter might need 48 colors of acrylic paint. While for us who don't paint at all, why do we keep even one color? And I wear this shawl. I mean, might have five or six because I wear hijab on daily basis. For a boy who only wears scarf during his winter travel, he might not need, he might not need it as much as I do. So is minimalism extreme and radical? The answer is no. But I understand the stigma. Because uh, for me, I was afraid of this. I was afraid that contentment will become my comfort zone to achieve more. Afraid that I will lower my standards in everything. Afraid that I will look extreme and my lifestyle is a bit different from others that I might be accepted. Afraid that I will look ugly and poor. It turns out, everything that I fear become the very opposite. Very opposite. Once I started to embrace minimalism, I start to become myself. So now I'm going to talk about how minimalism has impacted my life and can benefit yours too. Discover our unique self. The centricity is when everything about us is not associated to a certain brand or certain group, a certain style. From the things that we wear, up to the way we think. For example, let's take clothing. We think we don't have enough clothes. Almost as if we are hopelessly unfashionable. So we keep hunting for the latest trend, even though our wardrobe is already full. And we buy something and we bring that home feeling 
hopeful and excited. What's are the result? It, it turns out they are nice to see, they are nice to hold, but when we wear it, it looks as even more ridiculous. Whatever we have acquired throughout our life, most of them are the results of what the media told us we should do. It's hard to realize that our sense of style lies in the same few pieces that we keep repeating over the week. Like for me, when I downsize my wardrobe to the last few items that I really love, my personal style starts to appear. I found my personal style. <laughs> And it's just not just following the trend or the friend. Whenever, whenever I go out with my friend and have quite a lot of money in my pocket, but still being able to say, no, I don't need that, to the temptation. In a way, this lifestyle also helps me to say no. It's something that I'm struggling for a very long time. So minimalism helps you to focus on your inner self, to who you really are and what you really want. The second one, be confident. Using the same example, once I start to become, I found my style and become more confident with my with my things, with my possession. I feel me wearing the same, the same pants, the same tops. I still appreciate other people's personal style, but hardly tempted to copy them. Copy them. The only thing that will make you happy is being happy with who you are and not who people think you are. So it's counterintuitive if you think, but I become more confident when I have less clothing and stop wanting to buy more. Create space for the more important things. Whether we realize it or not, owning stuff can be exhausting sometimes. The time needed to do research and read reviews, the time needed to go out and get it, the time needed to care for it, the money needed to purchase it, the emotional investment over it, the storage needed to keep it. And then, as I said before, every item that you buy have some consequences item. It's money, time, space, and energy for the things that will only become a clutter in your house one day. And once it becomes a clutter, you have to add the time needed to clean and get rid of it. So, when you don't use these resources for unnecessary things, you have more space for the more important things. And the meaningful things in life often are not things. Quality over quantity. One of the biggest fear of minimalism is that it will downgrade your life's your life. I think this is just a myth because for me, minimalism create and increase more consciousness about what I'm going to bring to my life. For example, I don't have two or three of the same things. That is just this one lack of something, and the other one is lack of another thing. What I have, the one that only stay and stay with me, is the best. Instead of too many just okay things that I keep piling up. So, after all, the good impact of minimalism to, to me is I discover my unique self, I become more confident, I have more space for the meaningful things, and it, it promotes quality in my life. I'm very grateful that I discovered and embraced minimalism. I never thought of my life that having less things will make me happier. How to start to practice minimalism in your life today? Don't worry, because it doesn't start with throwing away all your stuff. It starts here, your mindset. Start assessing <coughs> your life and your priority. What are your key values? What is important to you? And then you look to the to your existing item that are already in your life, you touch them and ask them, what are you doing in my life? Do you give value to me? Have I used you enough? 
Sometimes we don't realize that we still keep things that are already broken. That thing you just throw them away. Okay? And then there are things that are still good but you're no longer using. You can donate and sell them. Then you also need to question yourself in every purchase. Every time you want to go out and buy something, ask yourself, do I really need this? Am I doing this on impulse? Am I doing this to compensate other liking in my life? Am I doing this just to impress others or because I'm jealous of others? Often, after questioning yourself, you will be happy to walk away. And then minimalism does not apply into material things. It also applies to things that you do. Evaluate the things that you do. And trust me, having less things in my life indeed makes my life richer. Richer of money, time, space, and energy because I only use it on the meaningful things. And more importantly, richer in your sense of self and personality and richer in meanings of your value and priority.